the appointment of Tim Nietzsche as the chairman of Illuminus is a, a great uh, tick for the entire business and the business plan. Uh, Tim, for those who don't know, is currently the chairman of Gold Road Limited, which is now under a three and a half billion dollar takeover by Gold Hills uh, Limited of South Africa. And Tim has been instrumental in that uh, takeover, all the commercial negotiations. And he's been the chair of Gold Road for nine years now. He's also got extensive experience on numerous boards um, throughout the uh, mining industry. And he's actually a chemical engineer by trade. And so he also understands the intricacies of the uh, aluminous and high pure process so all in all a, a fantastic uh, position to uh, have Tim in. So Impact purchased a 50% share of Hypura Proprietary Limited, which owns all of the uh, IP and assets uh, for a process to make high purity alumina. And since we uh, took possession of those assets, which is basically all housed in a shed down in Fremantle uh, here in Perth, uh, we since uh, the 1st of May, uh, we've done a complete review of all the operations down there, implemented safety, administration and financial systems, and currently are now putting material through the process. There are probably four main stages and we're taking material in batches through each of the parts of the process, ironing out all of the general commissioning problems to get to high purity lumina, and we hope to be there in a couple of weeks. That of course then immediately makes it potential for us to offer that material to clients for uh, uh, testing, qualification and potential offtake further down the track. So we believe that we've gained two years by making this acquisition. What we do at this point is always look at what Alpha HPA Limited are doing. Their code is A4N. They've been very successful in this space and they're currently scaling up to an annual production of about 10,000 tonnes per annum. And they aim to be there in about 2027, about two years from now. And whilst their plant is only 10,000 tonnes per annum, they've indicated in public announcements that they've received indicative demand for as much as 30,000 tonnes of HPA. So it's quite clear that the latent demand is there. The thing that holds clients back is, uh, is really being sure that you're going to be there in the long term to provide material for them if they're going to, say, for example, change supplier. And so that was also a crucial part of our acquisition of Hypera in that there is a pilot plant that is 90 percent uh, sort of uh, up and uh, almost 90 percent ready to go and we're finishing up at the moment and it's at that point that clients know that you're serious you're in the business and uh, the number of inbound interest was going to climb dramatically from here so all in all a very good development The high pure process has a number of advantages around it. Uh, first of all, obviously in the acquisition, we've got the pilot plant and we've discussed how that's uh, saved just two years in time and probably $6 million in overheads. So the main aim right now between now and the end of the year is to get that plant up and running and get to steady state operation. At which point we'll be able to provide material of a consistent quality to our potential offtake partners. So 2026 is the second stage, which is really all about customer engagement and also doing feasibility studies to work out uh, what the optimal size is of the next scale up of that technology. One of the beauty, uh, beautiful parts of the technology, it is modular, it's scalable. And so we can build in increments of say, several thousand tons per annum production at a time, rather than one big 10,000 ton per annum plant. That reduces our capex uh, quite considerably in our requirements for debt. So that's 26 is working out what that optimal size is. In 2027 then, we look to uh, establish a, a small production base, at least in North America, and that's where some of our initial inbound interest has come from, most likely in the USA, uh, where there's a, a big demand in particular for artificial sapphire. And, uh, and so 2027 is all about establishing that base in North America and raising funds potentially on the NASDAQ to move forward from there. So pretty exciting two years ahead of us.
Currently, the Lumis Hypera process is using a, a chemical feedstock, which is actually aluminium sulfate. It's part of the patent. And aluminium sulfate is used globally for water treatment. However, the Lake Hope material is actually full of aluminium sulfates. And so there's obviously a very natural uh, bolt on there that we can look to integrate the Lake Hope material into the Hypera process. The outcome of that it can be measured very simply. It's like if we can produce Lake Hope material uh, at a cheaper price than buying the aluminium sulfate, then the Lake Hope material becomes a natural feedstock for the entire process. And so it's a very simple thing. So we impact are looking at, uh, we're funding that. We're looking to see how that might integrate. A key part of that is also our research program underneath the federal government the CRCP grant that we got last year in conjunction with ECU, Edith Cowan University here, to look to implement membrane technology into our flow sheets. Uh, we believe that will also be a groundbreaking uh, introduction of that technology into the high purity space. And we believe that the membranes will operate in our own flow sheet and also in the high pure flow sheet. So there's a lot of, a lot of test work to be done in the next six months. In the meantime, most important thing to keep your eye on is actually a luminous process a progress towards producing HPA continuously and giving that to the clients. Because in the end, it's all about the offtake with our partners and customers.